So welcome to the latest anime and manga news of the week ending August 8th, 2020. Different format this week. I'm going to go through each news segment and then we're going to talk about it as a team here. Uh, and I'm going to start with a bit of a shocker this week that came out. I don't think anyone was expecting this. Um, yeah, you see it from, from there. Uh, the first new anime announced this week. We've been seeing more and more crossover of anime and video games lately. And not just the Japanese anime style games, this week was no exception. It was announced that Netflix and Ubisoft have teamed up to create an anime series based on the Splinter Cell video game franchise. Uh, no specifics have been announced about the production yet, except it'll have 16 episodes split into two seasons. Uh, Derek Kolstad, best known for writing the John Wick film series, will be both writer and exec producer. Um, and, uh, yeah, first game, that, that's a 2010, two, I'm sorry, 2002 franchise where that started. Uh, the, the first in the Splinter Cell, uh, Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell uh, games. Um, following Sam Fisher as he goes through various Black Ops stealth missions. Um, there have been, there's been a film adaptation of the franchise in the works for like a decade. So probably not really, uh, uh, not too many big chances of that, but apparently... We're getting an anime of that. Uh, what do we think of that? Does that seem like a good idea? Money. I mean... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, in the end, ultimately, good or bad, if they're, they mm. think it's going to generate a profit. Yep. Mm. I yeah. personally have no idea about that. what that is. So. <laughs> it's well, like, it's, eh. it's interesting because, you know, anime doesn't typically do such directly militaristic things. Right. Gasaraki. Yeah. Not true. Well, full metal you know, panic. It does... <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, what I was going to say was is, is that there is a a military Sailor Moon. Kind of... Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, there is a kind of a military thing, but the the uh, that that I think that uh, genre that that that's small enough, but I think it's gaining traction just because mm -hmm. of the way that things are changing in Japan right now. Oh, true. Um, in their in their attempts to not scrap their constitution, but amend their constitution away mm -hmm. from what it's been since you know the end of World War II to up until recently with uh, what's his name, Shino Abe, Abe, Abe. 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 Thank you. And it's more of a call him Abe. That would be Abby. funny as hell. <laughs> I think hey, it's it's so much. It's just like calling well never mind um so uh so there is this kind of this would kind of play up to the idea of a sort of a japanese uh nationalism i'm i'm kind of wondering if the the crossover of the game would be kind of like a, a joint something that happens in japan or is it an american anime uh, if you know what i mean it's it, mm. where it's not japanese centric but given that they, they are starting to head towards an, a slightly more militaristic view a little bit more nationalistic uh kind of things going on in, in that country this doesn't really surprise me that much although i think i would have picked um a better game mm. i don't know um i'm not much of a gamer but i think that splinter cell has been around or maybe because splinter cell has been around so long yeah it's a recognizable game Safe. and that's and that's why they're doing it but um, but it should please the Tom Clancy fans out there that mm -hmm. that yes. this is happening, uh, particularly since most of his his early works are based on actual board games he used to play with people, and then oh. he wrote stories about them based on it, and then went and did the the actual um, technical advisory for the U.S. government. That's why Clancy's books are written the way that they're written. Interesting. But um, mm -hmm. but yeah, so my two cents. Yeah, that makes sense. Totally. Cool. Uh, why isn't my thing not up over there? I wanted to do that. There we go. Um, next up, another reimagining of classic Japanese folk tales. This one's stemming from the demon hunting peach boy Momotaro, a website opened on Friday to announce the creator Cool Kyoshinja and artist Johan's Peach Boy Riverside manga is giving an anime adaptation. Uh, cool Kyoshinja is also the creator of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. And I can't understand what my husband is saying. Uh, I've, seen, I've seen the latter one and love that one. Uh, plus several other series. Uh, the TV anime series is set to premiere next July. So you have a little bit to wait. And imagine a world where the famous Momotaro is not the only magical peach-powered fighter. Uh, for those not familiar in the original folk tale, um, an old woman washing her clothes in a river comes upon a giant peach with a baby inside. The baby goes into this demon-killing hero, Momotaro. 
um, and the story of Peach Boy Riverside imagines a world where there are many such giant peaches and therefore many demon fighters gifted with the power of the peach. Um, I actually read a bit of this manga, I believe, in um, uh, in preparation for this, and it was definitely a shonen series, you know, very much what you kind of expect from that concept, um, and uh, just looked uh, um, looked kind of interesting. I don't know. Um, uh, it's it's always nice to see a uh, you know a darker manga getting uh, an adaptation. Was this going to be the dark side kind of anime thing where it's where it's going to be like Higarashi and some of those others where it's, it's going to be beyond me? It's not going to have happy, nice, fun time. It's going to be like, oh goodness gracious, it's <laughs> terrible. I can't tell. Yeah, who knows? We will find uh, out. I was going to say, yeah, we're going to wait for what is it? July of next year? Yeah. So we we have a, a ways to go. Oh wait, man! Definitely. So we've got to still survive the remainder of 2020. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, now our next two anime announcements have not actually had official announcements yet, but thanks to their manga cover art, we now know they're in the works. Uh, Amazon Japan, yeah, put up their listing for the next issue of Monthly Shonen Magazine, and its cover reveals a TV anime for uh, Marimo Ragawa's Mashiro no Oto manga. Uh, that'll be coming in April of 2021. So again, a little uh, uh, ways to wait. This is a coming-of-age drama about a, a girl and a boy. The girl plans to be an idol singer, but the boy plays a shamisen. Yeah. Um, they'll uh, both go on a journey to discover their figurative and literal voices. Uh, now, the manga launched in Monthly Shonen Magazine all the way back in December of 2009. So this adaptation is certainly a long time coming. Uh, Kodansha did release an animated promo video for the manga in May to celebrate the 10th year anniversary of the manga. So maybe that'll give us, you know, a little, little taste of things. Um, yeah, that's an interesting kind of, uh, idea for a, obviously sort of a coming-of-age romance thing, the Shamisen. Well, didn't, uh, didn't White Album involve a girl who was going to be an idol and her boyfriend who was, like, he did, he was not. He was not musically inclined. Mm, okay. So this is, it sounds like this is just adding that layer of the shamisen for the boyfriend versus, you know, what do you do if you have a, you know, normie and an idol mm, mm -hmm. and what are their interaction like? So this will, it, I'll, I will wait to hear people's review on how that goes. You know, how do they play that dynamic? Are they both, yeah. is he like a professional or trying to be? And so you have the relationship between two people trying to be together mm. and pursue their professional careers. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll yeah. see. That's interesting. Cause uh, if, if there's going to be a, a, an anime to that, I would imagine that there's probably going to be some type of soundtrack. So the Yoshida brothers are probably going to be involved in that. Mm. So that would be kind of cool. Yeah. And uh, that would be kind of cool to hear. Well, that, gives you two uh -oh. that gives you two tracks. Oh, that gives you two tracks. You could get, you could have for one series, you could have it's, an entire yeah. idol CD mm -hmm. and an entire shamisen CD. Yeah. Yeah. CD. Yeah. 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 I wonder yeah. if like, she's going to sing to the shamisen. Ooh. 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 You know. I liked it when they did that with uh, when Monkey Magic did that with um, with the Yoshida Brothers, and mm. it was um, I think I'm blanking on the song. Um, it was very Ken Burro ish. Mm. Um, anyway, they 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 did it a, a collaboration of uh, the the two bands, and it sounded nice. really really good. And so, um, cool. for those of you who don't know Monkey Magic, it's Monkey. Magic spelled with a J, and the majority of the band is Canadian. Hey. And uh, yeah, and um, our neighbors to the north, <laughs> right? And um, but it was it, it's just an amazing, um, uh, amazing song. So if you guys can look it up, look it up on YouTube. Monkey Magic right. Kushida Brothers cool. you should be able to find it. Let's see. I haven't found it yet, but last well, I've watched the two seasons of it. It's Kono Oto Tomare, hmm. which is about. Uh, it's about a high school Koto club and it's the music to it is the, mm. the competition stuff that they do the pieces that they do mm. amazing just okay. uh, like the audio quality that they've mm. they've made the effort for for just the anime itself for the concert pieces it's fantastic remind so I haven't me, found that yet but remind me what a Koto is um, the large stringed uh, oh, box yeah, like twelve yeah. string or seventeen oh, string. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. it's 
it's it's a it's a surprisingly really good series which mm. you i you know you wouldn't think like i loved sound euphone mm. so i thought that was going to be you know somewhat similar mm. so i dialed into this and i was really pleasantly surprised at how much i really enjoyed the show cool. and the music okay yeah. check that out mm. by the way the name of the song is change Change. I was thinking about. Okay. Yeah. Change and, and they... is turn and fit. Never mind. No, that's the wrong song. And, and I forgot that the Yoshida brothers actually played at Otakon in 2009. Oh. Really? Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they were there. They did a, about a four song set, I think. Mm. And they, they were in y'all's Storm. backyard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or in, uh, they played, I think, Storm and the other one. They did popular for, but it was really amazing. Cool. Um, more anime adaptations coming. Uh, this year's 16th issue of Hakusensha's Young Animal magazine has also been listed on Amazon, revealing an upcoming anime adaptation of another cute, cool Kyoshinja creation uh, in collaboration with Amahara, who created Interspecies Reviewers. But it's not that. Um, the, their manga, Heon Sedai no Itaten Tachi, or Ida Ten Deities in the Peaceful Generation launched in August of 2018, so much more recent, and is a remake of Amahara's online manga of the same name. Uh, it tells the story of a group of deities, the Ida Ten, who saved humanity from destru- destruction by demons 800 years ago. Uh, they've been living peaceful lives since then and have no fighting experience anymore, but the demons are beginning to revive and the battle is about to begin again. So, um, again, I took a look at this uh, manga. It looks very much like what you saw on the cover there. Um, it is very sort of Dagashi Kashi, so kind of art style. Um, and but it's very much shown in manga kind of concept, you know, uh, very Dragon Ball Z esque, you know, people flying around and punching each other and such. Um, but but more uh, upbeat tone, you know, more uh, more light light hearted sort of One Piece tone as opposed to um, you know you're gonna destroy the world. I'm gonna stop you. It looks like something I'd watch. So yeah. I'll, you know, I'll tune in. I'll tune in when the time comes. Mm-hmm. As long as it doesn't go on like 400 episodes, I think. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Charging up a spirit bomb for 27 episodes. Yeah. <laughs> it's only been out since, since 2018, so it can't be that long, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. So here's here's something. And if if you're uh, if you want to laugh, um, look at the original online manga versus the like professionally published one because they are very different in quality. Oh. <laughs> the, the online manga is is basically just you know. Um, Think like very, very <laughs> early webcomic, you know, where someone's just kind of scribbling oh things gosh, down, like, you know, it's, 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 it's like that. Oh, oh yeah. It's, oh, it's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, awesome. And then, uh, and, then, and then the manga is like, okay, yeah, this is, this looks much more like what I'm, what I'm used to. Um, so it's fun. Now we're going to draw real lines and clean. <laughs> right, exactly. Oh, yes. Sweet. Oh man. Good job. Um, and then our final um, anime adaptation of the week is for Dosukoi Sushi Zumo, or Sushi Sumo, which delightfully is exactly what it sounds like, a comedy following various sushi entrees as they enter the sumo wrestling ring. Uh, and no, not cute anime girls designed to look like sushi, surprisingly enough. Um, actual pieces of sushi with a face. Um, and apparently, I don't know, um... Um, the TV anime adaptation will appear on TVK and other channels next April. So again, a, a, a ways to wait. Original book published in 2018. Are there sushi-shaped yokai? I think there should be. Um, the opening sequence has already been posted on YouTube. I'm sure. Yep. Um, so yeah, the, the OP is already on YouTube. We're going to check that out. Um, apparently, it is, the song is irritatingly catchy, uh, as, as you might expect from such a thing. I got this. I, I okay. I just had sushi the other day, and I love I love sushi. So this is this is this is perfect. This is awesome. This will be you know this you know what this is going to be. This is going to be my go to when I rewatch a Silent Voice uh... or a Grave of the Fireflies or something else that's going to make me a blubbering mess on the couch, mm-hmm. emotional wreck on the couch, and I'm going to need something ridiculous. This is it. This sushi this is sumo. I think this is it. sushi sumo. It's awesome. It's just the whole premise is just awesome. Yeah, totally. Um, and it's sponsored, of course, by the National Association of Sushi Makers. <laughs> you know, and it's like that's that's an easy sell right there. Yeah. Like, hi, how you doing? We're gonna do a thing. Would you like to sponsor it? You know, sure. you uh, uh, Pakari Sweat. 
do you want a spot? No. Okay. Uh, how about you, calorie mate? You guys want no? Uh, sushi associate? Yes. Okay. Sure. It's all about sushi then. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that works. Um, all right. Uh, moving on to from anime announcements. There is no shortage of places to stream anime these days, but companies are still looking for more ways to reduce illegal distribution and encourage licensed streaming. So to that end, Toy Animation, Kodansha, and other anime content providers have opened a new anime streaming YouTube channel titled Anime Log, or Anime Analog for short. Uh, the aim is to produce only officially licensed animations and operate as a safe channel that families can enjoy together. Um, so at being sort of that uh, Cartoon Network destination kind of idea. Um, their goal for the future is to have 30 companies providing 3,000 anime titles by 2022. So, man, um, those 30 companies will include Nippon Animation, Tezuka Productions, and Shogakukan Shueisha Productions. So there should be something for everyone among those 3,000 titles. Um, many of the companies involved already operate their own YouTube channels, but they hope that combining their forces will allow them to grow their audiences, advertising revenue um, faster than they could on their own. Uh, the channel is currently available in Japan, but the staff does intend to add subtitles in English and, of course, Chinese for overseas fans in the future. And I got to say, it is it can be difficult to go and find, um, like, legit um, episodes of some of this stuff around. And I think if it is on yeah. YouTube legally streaming, that'll make it a lot easier to find some of this stuff. And it won't be, you know, um, somebody's fan sub accidentally uploaded at five frames per second and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Or in, or in like the uh, the heads up display with something else <laughs> around the side of it, right? Yeah. Or the oh, audio boy. tweaked in like a really crazy kind of way. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, does this uh, seem too I ambitious? Yeah. Well, the three thousand titles seems a little much. Um, yeah. But if they, I mean, you know, if if they can do it in a more, I don't know how to, how to say it, organized fashion and just kind of. I don't know if it's one channel that's going to do it for them or a collection of channels. Mm -hmm. or maybe they should just do it as a collection of channels because, uh, because just because the catalogs of all of them are so large. Yeah. And, um, but there is, um, but the, but again, the upside is that it, it won't be, uh, well, you were having trouble with it last night, weren't you? We yeah. were, we were going to watch one yeah. thing and you couldn't get it going because what it was, you say it was, it's like one big furry color spot. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 yeah, it had been uploaded at 240p. Um. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, but but so there is that, and there is actually this is this kind of goes to, you know, if you are doing the family friendly thing, then mm. this is a good thing for you know people to to have access to. Now, for those of us who want something a little bit more than that, is that is this something that's going to give us that, or is this going to be like? Disney well, Plus? here's the question, though. You know, what does family friendly mean in Japan? <laughs> Uh, true, true, <laughs> true, true. So I'm very curious to see what the line's going to be on the, that. The only thing that I just I hated is is like Aramanga Sensei. Is that family friendly, <laughs> or, or are we talking about relationships between family members? Or like people watching this, yeah. like because there's that whole different meaning there. Mm -hmm. Oriemo, uh, that's family friendly, but right, not in the way friendly. you're thinking. <laughs> it's very different guidelines. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. I, it sounds good, and you know what? Oh, yeah, when you dark. take these <laughs> big, big groups here and you try and cram them into to some collaborative effort, the three thousand some odd titles, sounds really good. And mm -hmm. things often that sound really good don't turn out so good. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. keeping every you know keeping all those ships on the same course, yeah, I have a feeling is going to be really kind of unwieldy so I, I i like steve saying whether it's going to be one channel or many like i mm -hmm. could see a, an umbrella mm -hmm. and then you've got channel right. one is toei channel two mm -hmm. is kadansha channel three you know what i mean it's like so that you're just organizing it yeah. mm -hmm. rather than have everybody spread out all over everything i think that would work mm -hmm. but yeah. you know what i mean if you're trying to cram it all into one big giant channel hey i don't think there's any way you can keep that thing going together yeah um, I'll be curious to see, and I'm assuming this is going to be, you know, primarily back catalogs. Um, you know, yeah. they're not; they've got yeah. tons of, yeah. you know, Maya the Bees and stuff like that back in the back catalog. They can just throw on there. Um, 
So, yeah, I think that that'll be... Crayon really Shin Chan. I mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Please. Oh, God, I love that show. No kidding. I mean, there's... The, and 3,000 episodes of it? Well, this is one of the exciting things. We were talking about this the other day. <laughs> you know, there there is so much kids anime that we've never gotten over here because they're, you know, 120 episodes and no one wants to dub all that. No one's going to subtitle it for five-year-olds. So, you know, it's just... it's it's been out of the hands of western fandoms it'd be great to be able to see some of this stuff yeah. fingers crossed um all right then what else do we have here oh yes um it is it is time for online stuff um yeah, we'll move over to that one so predictably this week brings us a couple more online events taking place in the near future but rather than conventions uh these announcements come from a couple of beloved anime series and franchises themselves uh, first up, Bandai Namco Collectibles announced on Tuesday it'll be holding the first ever Gundam Online Expo event in the United States. The expo is set to run from August 20th to August 31st, so fans have many days of Gundam events to look forward to. It'll feature the Gunpla World Ver MG exhibit, um, as well as an augmented reality version of Japan's Gundam based Tokyo venue, the store museum venue where the uh, Gundam Unicorn statue is located. Um, also, um, professional modeler Katsumi Kawaguchi will offer painting lectures during the event for those who enjoy customizing their own Gunpla models. This is Meijin. Uh, if you've seen Gundam Build Fighters, the character of Meijin is him. Um, and of course, exclusive merchandise will be available for order during the event as well. SAO is also holding online events this month, but in true SAO fashion, they'll be held in virtual reality. Uh, August 10th, 12th, and 15th, the franchise will be holding the SAO Alicization Woe Virtual Meeting, W-O-U, Woe, I don't know, through VR social media service Cluster, never heard of it before, which is accessible through VR headset, smartphone, or computer. So I'm curious to see how that works. Uh, various voice actors are set to appear. Ah! Um... Lifa voice actress uh, Ayana Takakatsu will appear on August 10th. Alice voice actress Ai Kayano will appear August 12th. And Kirito himself, Yoshitsugu Matsuoka, um, as well as Asuna uh, Haruka Tomatsu and Ronie voice actress uh, Erin Okondo will appear at the August 15th event. The virtual space uh, is inspired by the Wrath console featured in the uh, anime, so folks can feel like they're truly part of the SAO future, just without all those constant life-threatening situations. Uh, further details, including the actual content, will be revealed on August 9th. So I gotta say, I do enjoy when uh, events for anime are themed around the anime, uh, and they, they find some way of synchronizing those things. That's always fun. The um, I gotta tell you, I'm actually the 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 Gundam one is is actually one that I probably want to attend because, um, I. I've been wanting to get into model kits mm. uh, to actually to, to actually make models. I, you know, just want something that a, a little bit more um, hands on with 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 my anime experience. Mm. And uh, and I've been thinking about doing this for a while now. And between my misguided attempt of wanting to make my own kaiju movie and then putting together little Ooh, tanks and yeah. stopping on them, I I, I feel that the the, the, the gunplay. Uh, gunplay model making sounds uh, pretty cool. Um, yeah. Maybe setting up, you know, a diorama or something like that. It's just something I'm looking looking for. It's something I, I personally want to try try out and see how well I do with it. Cool, absolutely. So, yeah, so that, that looks like something I would probably want. You're going to be buying an awful lot of paint. <laughs> paint my, my, blue. Apartment, my apartment is so small. I'm going to be like, yeah. okay, where do you live? Well, in the corner of my living room because my bedroom is the entire yeah. battle scene. Oh, it'll, of... be, it'll be a whole otaku room. Oh. Completely floor to ceiling, Shell all shelves filled, filled with everything otaku. otaku. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Brent, you'll be getting requests, 3D printer requests. <laughs> uh... Sure. <laughs> I'm up for that. Nice thing about Gunpla, no nice. glue. So at least you don't need That's that. That's really. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yes, you know, snap them together. Snap. Those, the, yeah. yeah. Gunpla is entirely snapped together. All um, together. Um, oh. Force fit. Um, yeah. Wow. And you don't need to paint them either. Like they, they come like that. They're, they're all pre-colored. Um, obviously. It's a, oh neat. It's a good out. way to start if you're like a novice like mm -hmm. me. Yeah. And the okay. the. I, was uh, saying, I noticed a lot of frame arms girls do the same thing. Yeah. Where it's the it's all already colored with uh, mm -hmm. water transfer decals for wherever oh, yeah. you want to make like 
specific colors or, mm, or, or the markings. Badges or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, Shim upon, actually. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's well, exactly. Um, <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, the, the kits start at 20 bucks. So it's an easy oh, thing to do. Oh, that's affordable. Yeah, exactly. Huh. Um, and they're pretty good, pretty good stuff. Um, all right. Uh, speaking of online events, uh, it has been a very long time since we heard about any in-person event that's actually happening, not being canceled. But this week we get just that. The Kyoto International Manga and Anime Fair confirmed this week it is planning to take place as normal this year, September 19th and 20th. And it will be the first major event to take place in Japan since One Fest in February. Um, yeah. As of Wednesday, 40 companies and organizations plan to take part, and around 19 specific works will be showcased. Like previous years, it'll have an exhibition of manga and anime works, plus stage events, arts workshops, merchandise stores, art seminars, job fair, and family-friendly events. Um, the event's website's published a set of guidelines for dealing with the coronavirus, asking visitors not to attend if they've been sick. That's a good piece of advice. Um, uh, or if they're elderly or at high risk for infection. Um, uh, plus guidelines to bring a mask and hand sanitizer, explaining that attendees will have the temperature checked at entry and only a limited number of people will be allowed in the halls at one time. But thank goodness. Have the checked at yeah. entry. <laughs> um, do you have any money? You have no money? Get out. <laughs> so we're finally yeah, getting it out again. Be, this will be great because I, I think, I hope that it will provide a model for 2021. And for, for conventions that are coming in at that time here uh, in the United States. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, you know, we'll, as a nation, get better dealing with this. The hope, hopefully, get better dealing with the coronavirus uh, here so that we can do these things. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So it, it'll just be really interesting. Uh, a, I'm just happy that somebody somewhere is saying, here's a place for you to come to. It's going to be a lot different than what you're used to. But here it is. And then for the rest of us to see, take notes and say, okay, what was good about it? What, you know, what worked, what didn't work so that we can do it here mm -hmm. yeah. and try to bring the convention season back a little bit and, you know, bit by bit, obviously conventions from now on are going to be massively different, yeah. but hopefully yeah. this, this hope will, will give us a good template to work off of and see if it even works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally. Well, I wonder if that means for any of the things like like Oticon and stuff, where you've got fifty thousand people to show up in a day. I I wonder if this if we're going to see at this con that they're going to throw if their average was one hundred and fifty thousand people in a day. Mm -hmm. Are you going to see right. like some radical maneuvers to say, you know what? Sorry, fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're doing one third of our physical capacity and then everybody who can't get an exclusive entry you know what this is the new reality we're also going to have an online component mm -hmm. so that you can I, I buy a pass have, yeah. for an online component if you cannot yeah. score a ticket and and to be clear this is an industry event um okay. so it is I'm, i believe it's open to the public um but it's going to be interesting to see how the industry deals with this where it's more about selling stuff to other businesses right but yeah because um, because I think that, that is the advantage is you can control that a little better because you can say you know don't send your entire staff this year, send one person, right. you know, send your single rep. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. um, so fingers crossed. Make sure they have authority to buy things. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> money, money, money. Mm -hmm. But no, you I think the, you have the blank PO form on you. No, get out. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, now, speaking of Japan, if anyone's planning on visiting, oh, one second, come back. If anyone's planning on visiting Japan in the future, looking for a truly immersive anime experience, well, Kanakawa's got you covered. Their interactive EJ Anime Hotel is set to open October 1st, located in Saitama Prefecture. Uh, the hotel will feature, a... <laughs> it'll contain 33 rooms with opening rooms themed around Konosuba, a certain scientific railgun tea, Bofuri, Uzaki-chan wants to hang out, and Yuki Yuna is a hero franchises. Uh, each room will contain large-scale projectors, as well as professional quality lighting and sound systems 
creating a theater-like environment for guests to enjoy their favorite media. So you just sit back and watch anime instead of going out. <laughs> the, <laughs> the hotel is themed around the idea of interactivity and will also contain uh, event spaces, museums, a shop selling original merchandise, so you gotta go now, as well as a restaurant area selling food based on popular franchises. So yes, you can go and get your Gundam wings. Uh, along with anime and games, the hotel, the hotel also intends to showcase um, other entertainment media. So they'll also feature manga, movies, tokusatsu, idols, and so forth over, over the time. Uh, details will be released on the official website starting September 1st. Who's going with me? Hell yeah. I, hey, I am. I am me, me. Apparently I'm mortgaging the house. Oh, well. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no news I, here on price. No, I, uh, yeah. It's probably <laughs> going to be like 20 or 30 bucks a night. I, yeah, I sure, imagine. Yeah. It's going to be really affordable. It's, it's I mean, it's 34 fun. rooms. Did it, did it say it was just 34 dedicated to that? So it's like a 300-room hotel with 34 for that? The hotel will contain 33 rooms, all of them themed around anime. It's going to be like $2,000 a night. Yep. Mm. As we, and, and so much, it's so awesome, but so many things could go so wrong mm -hmm. and bad. There's a In great a YouTube video from um, one of the theme park, um, Defunct Land. Uh, he interviewed the... That's the sales clerk at the Nickelodeon hotel and what it was like, uh, not, not sales, but a woman who worked as, as, as like um, customer service at the Nickelodeon right. hotel and all the things that can go wrong. Oh, you know, um, I would not want to be the concierge at the bottom there. Just going, getting the phone, getting the phone call mm -hmm. in the mattress. Oh god! <laughs> Hi, I'd like to talk about the th the third floor balcony. The people that are staying in that room and they're overlooking the pool, and this is what they're doing. Whoa! Oh, that's rather impressive. Um, but, oh god, no! Hi, yes, yeah. housekeeping. We're gonna need you to go up uh, uh, up to the fifth floor because apparently somebody's installed a trapeze. <laughs> what? Yeah. Housekeeping, um, mop. What do you mean, mop? Just, just mop. Just, just mop. Mop. <laughs> mop at as much bleach as you can find. Exactly. Yeah. For your eyes as well. Speaking of eye bleach. Yes. Um, uh, our next piece of news is an unfortunate one, and some one we certainly hope won't be hearing much again in the future. Um, it was reported this week that Anime Studio Arms, also known as Common Sense, which is kind of funny, has officially declared bankruptcy. Uh, the suit is probably best known for Elfin Lead, as well as Ikitosin and Queen's Blade. The company was founded back in 96, and originally focused on outsourced animation work from Studio Pierrot, as well as producing adult anime in collaboration with Pink Pineapple and Green Bunny. Uh, they produced adult anime under the arms name, as well as several other pseudonyms. The studio began producing its own original anime, starting with Mezzo in 2004 and stopped producing adult works once their main television anime began to gain popularity, although the, uh, the DNA is pretty clear. The most recent work they produced was the Ikitosin Western Wolves OVA in 2019. But the last time they produced a full anime series was back in 2015 with Valkyrie Drive Mermaid. Um, always sad to hear a studio shutting down. Uh, yeah. Interesting that one that kind of started in the adult industry and went more legit. Um, yeah. That that didn't really work out for them. Long term. Metso. I, I, I really loved Metso. Mm. Um, that anime. Actually, I used it in a lot of the AMVs that mm. I made uh, back in the day. Um, but you're right. There is. I and mean, there's Metso that's in it for public consumption. Then there's the Metso series that's. <laughs> and, yeah. Those two and, scenes. Yeah. yeah. I'll say Elfin Lead, I, I certainly enjoyed it. But I, you know, I only yeah. watched Ikitosin, like, uh, I think it was when I was on quarantine. Mm. I watched Ikitosin. Mm. So I've only just, you know, I've seen that reasonably recently. So yeah. it's, it's kind of yeah. sad to see that the studio's gone belly up. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Business is business. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it says something that they, they did an OVA last year, but then before that, it was 2015. So presumably yeah. things had been uh, kind of on the ropes for a while. 
Um, but hopefully they can they can move on and do other things, um, and they can do so in uh, effective and legal ways, which is important because with all of the crackdowns on copyright enforcement recently, Japan's Agency for Cultural Affairs has apparently decided copyright laws could use some positive press. And so to that end, they've officially appointed Hello Kitty as their copyright PR ambassador. How cute. The ever popular mascot will appear in international videos, school materials, and other media to spread awareness about copyright infringement issues. How not cute. Um, she was officially given the title through a formal ceremony. At the ceremony, the agency's Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology told the mascot, quote, I hope that you can, you can thoroughly convey the wonders of the real thing, end quote. And honestly, if anybody could convey the wonders of copyright law, whatever those are, uh, it's probably Hello Kitty. Um, in response, she promised to do her utmost to ensure that everyone learns about copyright. And I just want to point out this man who is standing next to Hello Kitty some afternoon to talk about copyright law. And like that was his life for that day. Uh, that he, he had to do that. What an experience that must have been. A oh, professional boy. highlight for him, no doubt. <laughs> I'm sure. He probably just went home and just said, <laughs> I could have shaken hands with the Prime Minister. Instead, <laughs> I stood with a giant cartoon cat. Mm -hmm. Isn't isn't Sanrio... It's not South Korean, is it? No, it's, it's Japanese. No, okay, good. It's, it's right. Japanese. That's what yeah. I'm saying. They're, so, but they're all, oh, they're all pervasive. I mean, yeah. literally, their mis mi mission is all things co-op, right. mm -hmm. and it's just pervasive. So, the, the, so I'm kind of wondering how, how Hello Kitty is going to enforce copyright law. She's going to walk around with a little wand and go, <laughs> "Cute, a bad infringement." Wow. Smack you in the head, or you know what? What is she? Gonna, well, what is gonna? Why happen? not do the Death Note thing? Why not get like you know, <laughs> like one of the Shikigamis? Like you know, just go out. Like if you if violate copyright law, you'll be put it'll to be, death. <laughs> like oh, there you go. That's much more threatening. Be like, be like one of those one of those old notebooks from from the nineteen eighties and nineties. You took to school the Trapper. Tra trapper like, keepers. Notebooks. Oh yeah. Trapper, yeah. trapper keepers with a unicorn on the front. She'll mm -hmm. have like this massive like. Pen that looks there like a, you know a moon wand and and she'll just write down Brent P Newhall dies <laughs> of uh, whatever she uh, got me will come up and take you away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. And in fairness, she faced off against Amuro Ray recently, right? You know she uh, she, right. she, she faced off against the Gundam. Okay. So you know she yeah, has the a, Hello Kitty some, Gundam some, crossover. Some yeah. Here's the thing. You know, th this very much feels like some government official saying, how do we make this softer and easier and more palatable? What's the softest, you know, more pal most palatable thing I can think of? Hello Kitty! I cannot imagine, and I want to be proven wrong, the palatable video featuring Hello Kitty, Kitty lecturing you about copyright law. Like, how do they make this work, is my question. What do you do? I think you're right because it's going to be some guy in a dark corner of the universe on Earth, <laughs> shaved in like five days. He has mounds of like, coke around him, illegally down downloading, and then set, having seen Hello Kitty and just being like, "I'll add that to my collection." Here we go. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, yeah. Seriously, where is the enforcement of this? <laughs> they're not gonna. They're not gonna go. Oh hell no, Kitty! Kitty found me. Right. Kitty found me. That's it. It's done. I I I gotta shave and get a job and not download illegally, illegally or, or infringement or whatever. I mean, yeah. I mean, but but really, how how does that how does that work? I mean, yeah, clearly I mean, to tell people like I mean, it's one thing to tell a twelve year old. It's another thing to yeah, tell. Don't to, pirate don't things, pirate. Billy. I mean. If we can make movies like Amazon Women on the Moon that made an entire segment laughing at the Video Piracy Act that the FBI puts a warning on, mm -hmm. they're going to laugh at this. Yeah. That's the thing is I, I don't know. And I guess the idea is there are so many kids and teenagers who just go on YouTube 
going whatever to yeah. to watch whatever and aren't really thinking about it. And certainly we see this at cons of fans who are just like, oh yeah, I just go, I just type in Naruto anime and go to whatever site that comes up. And yep. it could be, you know, a pirate site. I don't care. Um, and right. so I, I guess there is some education to be had there. Um, but I just... Or is it just going to be, gonna just be a swirling Hello Kitty head that comes up close and then stops on the screen and says, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. And then as they get closer, it sort of morphs into a skull. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> uh, all I can, all, just for this, for that picture of the guy with, you know, standing with Hello Kitty, all I'm envisioning is like this 80 year old man going, much popular to kids. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Much popular to kids. What'll get their attention? I know. Hello Kitty. That's the thing. The cat thing, right? Yeah, that'll be good. <laughs> like, really? Yep. You could have and, come up with almost anything that would be, like, slightly threatening. It's mm, supposed to Hello Kitty. It's like, I feel now a warm and fuzzy sensation every time I violate <laughs> I feel like I, I should have a big old hug. Hmm. Well, here's the thing. I mean, I'm, I'm sure Sanrio deals with counterfeit Sanrio merchandise every second oh, of the yeah. day. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So they're more yeah, than willing absolutely. to lend their hand on this, and I'm sure they'll, they'll get some government cash from it too. Um, you know, yeah. uh, so that that can't hurt. Um, but yeah, it just seems kind of kind of uh, um, weird. It it seems weird. It it, it seems um, not very sort of, sort of socially aware. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um, it feels yeah. kind of on that. Well, I mean, they could have here. easily have come up like the uh, um, Olympics mascot. I mean, they, literally, they could have come up with if they said, "Well, we really like, you know, such and such studio. We like your style. You know, mm. we, we were going to, you know, submit these requests yeah. for characters to be right. submitted to the government for our anti anti piracy program." Mm. You know what I mean? It's like you've right. got the resources there to like get people to submit stuff, and yet you went with Hello Kitty. Uh. Okay, I'm now looking. Um, do they have? Hello Kitty with an AK-47 taking out a pirate. <laughs> um, oh, Kitty, go. oh, they already have one. They already have an anti-piracy mascot. It is basically a tokusatsu character whose head is a video camera who runs Ooh. around. Aww. Yes, and is, is very visually interesting. Um... So that is a thing. It reminds me of Gle Gleepnir. There's a character in Gleepnir that has mm. a video camera for a head. Ah, okay, yeah. Interesting. Um, and I'm, I suspect it is not very successful <laughs> in effective <laughs> and stopping copyright.